sure what I have to contribute because I work with technology companies, Israeli companies, um, and you're not normally engaged in this high-level policy setting discussion. I mean, we're in Israel. Uh, there are rules most of the time. You file what you file, you get the answer. Uh, I'm just a lawyer, right? Um, but the more I thought about this and the more I listened, uh, you see I have all these notes, the more I realized um, Israel, you could say, okay, you're just in Israel, but as a regulator, Israel has a much stronger uh, uh, responsibility than countries in similar size. And it's something we see in, let's say, regulation of, of privacy, that uh, the Irish DPC, it regulates Microsoft and Twitter and Google and Facebook and, and TikTok and all of those. And it's just in Ireland, it's a small country. And they're basically, they say it, they're in over their heads. So what we do here in Israel with the concentration of the cyber activity is much more important, I think, even probably than what the regulator might you know, think of themselves. And we talked about international norms, and we talked about Wassenaar, by the way, beautiful suburb of The Hague, you can cycle, uh, but no, there's, there's no indication of the importance of the suburb to international trade in dual-use goods. Anyway, um, so Israel is not a uh, party of Wassenaar, but adopts it for uh, dual-use goods, not for encryption, by the way. So we're doing our own thing on encryption. You can, uh, basically in Israel, you, uh, even the import of encryption is regulated, and the development of encryption is regulated. Everything you do with encryption is regulated, and it's defined in a super, super, super wide uh, way that those who know the Israeli song of Ani B, that, that, that is a code and potentially it, whoever uh, the broadcaster needed to have a license. It's that broad because they were using a cipher which is just an attempt to hide the contents. Um, and what we see here is most of the time, you know, we file uh, the application to get the license. They want to know technical things that I understand nothing about, like types of uh, cryptography used. Um, sometimes they ask more questions. You wait a while. Sometimes you wait a long while, and then you ask them, okay, what's going on? Internal issues, okay? Uh, so point one, no visibility, no transparency. You send what you send, you get back your license most of the time you get a license that just do whatever you want with it, and sometimes it's limited, so you can't sell it to this or that. And here is one area where, you know, if you have your international development here, and Israel does its own thing, and then it becomes part of a product that goes all over the world, how do you deal with that? How do you communicate with the, that regulator? Why, why do they care about something? And it's sometimes the case that they care about something that is on the internet to download legally. I'm not talking dark web or anything. It's just an SDK. You can download it. And they care, but they don't tell you why they care. Um, so problem one for a small country, if there's no, it doesn't comply with the norms, um, that can create friction. Even when we do comply with the norms, uh, that too can create friction. Um, Wassener comes up again. Um, it was mentioned here in 2015. Wassener in, uh, introduced um, new categories, intrusion tools. Israel, uh, in infinite wisdom, decided to widen the, the, the list of controlled items and included vulnerabilities and forensic tools. Small problem, uh, if you want to uh, share a vulnerability that is a controlled item, you need a license. Small. The problem is, if you're a manufacturer and you want to protect your product and the vulnerability was found here, you suddenly need a license. 
And of course, the Ministry of Defense said, oh, don't worry about it. Within 30 days, you will have your license. Don't worry. You know what in Israel what it means, don't worry, right? Uh, run for the hills. So, um, but this wasn't particular for Israel, a particular issue for Israel. It, the same happened in the US. Of course, it was solved in a very Israeli way, I think. I wasn't in the meeting. I do know one day there was a big problem. Then uh, Satya Nadella came to visit Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, and then there was a press release, pleasantries, wonderful country, blah, 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 blah. Is, uh, President, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu added, Israel will impose as few restrictions as possible on export of cyber technology. And that, just like that, that was gone. Good. Uh, in 2017, Wassenaar changed the list again, and then our regulator published this. Uh, this is all that Israel says about regulation of, um, of uh, intrusion tools and vulnerabilities. I'll just read the bottom line, the exception. Except, uh, so now it's controlled, you need a license. Um, exceptions to this rule are activities of the type identification, reporting, transfer, or analysis of vulnerabilities for an entity assigned to fix the vulnerability or to coordinate such fixing antivirus companies and the developer of the software in which vulnerability was discovered. These activities do not require licenses your, uh, for your attention, DECA, so happy. That, that is the regulator, and, that, and that's what we have. Um, there are questions, but at least now for defensive users, no one is asking for a license. For offensive use, those who ask for a license uh, complain of lack of visibility. No, no. Basically, they cannot set expectation because expectations because they don't know what will happen. The one thing I would add about this is something that was added after the NSO um, issue scandal. Call it what you like. Um, the form. Uh, it was added to the form an end user declaration um, and the end user undertaking. So there's an end, end user declaration on the end users, and now there is section 11 undertaking, and it basically says, I will not re export, I will use it for the, the purpose which I said we would use it, and that's that. Uh, I don't know if anyone controls it, you just sign it. Uh, we're, I don't know, I guess Panamanian president would sign it. Uh, not think twice about it. Um, so, so this is where we are uh, from, you know, from the perspective of uh, an Israeli practitioner. So we fill the forms if we think we need to. So for cryptography, we always need to, no matter what, unless the item is so-called delisted. There's an Excel sheet. It's becoming a little bit too large for searching, but that's what we have. And if your product is not delisted, you need to apply for a license and you wait. And it can be 30 days, and it can be 90 days. If it's the holidays or the summer, good luck. Um, they're okay, they're cooperative as far as, but it's, you know, it's a black box. Um, and, and I don't, regularly do uh, offensive cyber. My friends who do, as I said, complain about efficiency of the review. So, and also, but I think maybe they don't like the competitors, they say no one weeds out the bad actors, which I guess is, you know, we're okay, no one else is okay. My final thought is, you know, back when they wanted to regulate defensive cyber in the same way, I thought, just like the order here, if it's defensive, just leave it alone, don't touch it. Uh, those of you uh, who are interested, there was uh, there's an interesting story published in on Aleph today in English about uh, an, uh, a couple of Israeli entrepreneurs who started two companies in the Netherlands sharing an office, one doing defensive, one doing offensive. Uh, I have questions, so maybe, Maybe my recommendation would be it's not just defensive, it's out of the picture. It's vetted players, like trustworthy players, 
big company. Multinationals wouldn't wouldn't dabble in offensive cyber, like dirty cyber. But smaller players, uh, maybe we should have another look. So, um, 